Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Number 16 on the ASVAB says, in the figure above, the sum of angles 1 and 2 equals what? Well, look here. 1 and 2 lead to this straight line. Well, a straight line always has 180 degrees in it. So I don't care which one's which, they add up to a straight line. So our final answer here is going to be A, 180 degrees. Looks like one of those internet fads. We're going to take a look at number 17 today. This is an algebra question. Obviously, a lot of things here. Two ways you could do it. You could either start plugging in answers and see what they give you and see which one actually makes it equal, or you can go ahead and try to solve this baby out. Let's go ahead and go with the latter of the two. Let's start by distributing all these things, all right? So starting off, 3 times 2 is going to give me 6x. 3 times negative 5 is going to give me negative 15. We got this negative 2 times 4 is going to give me negative 8x. And I got negative 2 times 1, which is going to give me negative 2. On this side, negative 5 times x is going to give me negative 5x. And negative 5 times 3 is going to give me negative 15. And we still got that negative 2 squeezing on the end there. Then we got combined like terms. Well, I got a 6 and a negative 8. That's going to give me a negative 2x. I have a negative 15 and a negative 2 going to give me negative 17. I still have a negative 5x over here. And then I still have that negative 15, negative 2 for another negative 17. Looking at this, if I add this guy to both sides, so now we're now adding 5x to both sides. And that's going to cancel out with some of these, and that's going to leave us with 3x over here. And if I add the 17 to this side, holy cow, they're going to cut out entirely, and that's going to leave us with a 0. Divide both sides by 3, and x is still going to be 0. That's going to be our final answer, x equal to 0. Number 18 on the ASVAB says, A cube has a volume of 64 cubic inches. What's the length of one side of that cube? So we're looking at a cube here. All right, there, there's my great picture of our cube. Now, with a cube, you have the same value here for the height of the cube, the length, the width, whichever ones you gotta label them, everything is the same value. Now, how do you find volume of a cube? Well, the cube is gonna be length times width times height, and we just said all of those are essentially x, or whatever this value is. So that means really it's x times x, times x times x, or x to the third power. So what to the third power gives you 64? Well, you know, not, may not know that right off the bat, but if we look through, let's just start with our smallest and go from there. 4 times 4 is 16, times another 4 is going to end up giving you 4 times 6 is 24, 4 times 1 is 4, plus the 2 gives you 6. So you have 64 right off the bat by doing 4 to the third power. So that's already our answer. We're not even going to bother with the other ones, and we'll be able to go on from there. Number 19 is an exponent question here. We have x to the third power raised to the second power. So what does it mean to raise something to the second power? It means you take this whole thing and multiply it by itself. So in this case, it's going to be x to the third power times x to the third power. And when you do that, there's something called the product rule that states that if you have the same base being multiplied together with exponents, you can actually just add those exponents together. So in this case, it would be 3 plus 3, which is 6. So we would have x to the sixth power. Now, if we look back at this original question here, this actually brings up something that is always the case. Because you would always just be repeating another one, let's say we had x to the third power, I would go ahead and do times x to the third again, and you would just add another three. Well, that's the same type of thing as multiplying. So there's a product rule that actually states that or sorry, power rule that states that when you are going an exponent raised to an exponent, you can just multiply them together. So in this case, 3 times 2 gives us the same answer of x to the 6th power, which is answer B. If I inches of rain fall in one minute, how many inches fall in each hour? This is one of those questions where it's actually so easy that when you're reading through it, you almost start second guessing yourself and get confused. Let's take a look at it though. It says if I inches of rain fall in one minute. Well, here's the deal. Let's say there's two inches of rain per minute. Then I would do two times the one to tell us that that's a total of two inches per minute. All right. So that means we're essentially multiplying here. I times the number of minutes 
will end up giving us what we need. Now let's talk about this. It says, how many inches fall in eight hours? Well, if I are falling every minute, and I know that there are 60 minutes in an hour, then that means that I can just go ahead and multiply whatever this answer was, the I times one minute, which is just I, I can multiply that by 60, all right, times 60, and that's going to tell me how many I get in a hour, just one hour. So then what if I have H hours? Well, if I know like, hey, this is how many I'm getting in one hour, then if I'm going to do it in two, I'll just multiply that answer by two. If I'm going to get it in three hours, I'm going to multiply it by three. So again, we're just going to be multiplying it by H. So our final answer here should be I times 60 times H. And since it's commutative, you can actually switch the ordering of those, meaning our answer is D. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today, but remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.